Hey everyone, Howley at High Octane Cards here for this week's race preview video at Kansas Speedway. Now, this this is real life. This is what this name is called. Bush Beer had a contest. Anheuser Busch had a contest to uh, you got to name the race, and I don't know who the winner was, but there was four uh, social media. They had four choices, and the winner ended up being the Bushy McBush Race 400. So this is, that's real life, guys. That's real life. Bushy McBush Race 400. So I think there's been a lot more creative uh, creative names there. Got some notes here that I've got and the lineup and everything to go through. Uh, there have been 30 previous races at Kansas Speedway. The first one was in September of 2001. I believe this was the second race after 9-11. The first one being Dover the, the, the week before that Dale Jr. won. Um, but the first race at Kansas was September 30th, 2001, won by Jeff Gordon. I believe Jason Leffler had the pull for that race. I could be mistaken. Um, I'm just going uh, through some facts and stats that Racing Reference had thrown up. Thrown up. Uh, the most recent race back of October last year was won by Joey Logano. Uh, there have been six times. Now, th this is some of the stats that I want you to keep in mind when I read you the top ten in the lineup here in a little bit. Uh, there have been six poll winners have won a race at Kansas, uh, 14 out of 30 times, or 47%, someone from the top five starting position have won, 18 out of 30 times, or 60% of the time, a top 10 starter has won, Brad Keselowski in 2011, which was his second career win, uh, won from the 25th starting position, the worst, and that's the worst starting position ever by a winner, so if you're starting back beyond 25th position, you're probably not going to win. The race record uh, was in 2018 by Chase Elliott at 152.057 miles an hour. The qualifying re uh, record, of course, we do metric qualifying right now, 197.621 by Kevin Harvick in 2014. That is fast, 197 for a mile and a half average banked track. It's not a high banked track. It's I, I don't remember what the actual banking is in the corner. Probably about 16, 18 degrees. You know, when you think those speeds, you think Daytona and Talladega at 31 and 33 degrees. Kansas is not thought of as being a 100, a 200 mile an hour track. Uh, the record for lead changes is 29 back in 2009. The uh, lowest or the smallest margin of victory was in 2004 when Joe Nemechek beat Ricky Rudd by .081 seconds. Of course, Joe Nemechek swept the weekend. He won the Xfinity Series race the day before, I'm edging out, I believe it was Greg Biffle. That I'm just that, I'm just doing that from memory. Uh, in 2013 and 2017, there was a record of 15 caution flags in each of those races. Now, as far as drivers that uh, have certain amounts of starts here and lacks of success, uh, Kurt Busch has 30 race starts. He started all the races there and has no wins. Michael McDowell has zero top fives and zero top tens in 19 races. Ryan Newman, now this really caught me by surprise. Ryan Newman, 30 starts at Kansas. Him, Kurt Busch, a couple others have started every race in Kansas. Ryan Newman, 30 starts at Kansas. Zero poles, guys. Zero. This is Ryan Newman, the, the one they all call Rocket Man because of his propensity for winning poles so often, especially in that 2003 to 2006 period when he had those uh, Penske Dodges that just, you know, were on a rail every weekend. But zero poles in 30 attempts for Newman at Kansas. That was unbelievable. Timmy Hill has 12 races at Kansas. Zero laps led. That's the most of anybody. And Joey Gase has eight races at Kansas and zero lead lap finishes. So just a little bit of uh, numbers to throw at you guys. I always like the numbers part of it. Speaking of numbers, um, Chevy has uh, 12 wins at this track. Ford has nine, Toyota has seven, Hendrick Motorsports has leads all owners right now with seven wins, JGR and Penske are tied at six. Now, the race is being held on May 2nd. Last time a cup race was held on May 2nd was at Richmond, Kyle Busch was the winner, but May 2nd is also important to Kyle Busch because that is his birthday, so he was the last driver to win, I believe, on his birthday. Uh, those stats didn't pop up, and I know there's only been a handful of birthday winners in NASCAR. As far as the starting field goes, we talked about the manufacturer wins. Uh, Chevy has 17, Ford has 17, and Toyota has 5. That's the number of manufacturers uh, starting in this weekend's race. 
Excuse me, I thought I was going to sneeze there. Anyway, Ryan Newman will make his 700th career start this weekend. Alex Bowman will make his 200th career start. Cole Custer will make his 50th career start. And Matt Mills will make his Cup Series debut driving for BJ McLeod. There were no milestone starts last week. I double-checked it. I know I didn't put it in the video last week, and I forgot to put it in the review video, but double-checked it. There were no milestone starts last week. Just double-checking here. We'll do a real quick uh, top 10 like we like to do here. This is your top 10 starters for the race. Row 1, Brad Keselowski, William Byron. Row 2, Michael McDowell, who had that awesome run last week at Talladega, and Kevin Harvick. Row three, Matt DiBenedetto and Austin Dillon. Row four, Ryan Blaney and Ch Christopher Bell. And your row five, rounding out your top ten, Kyle Busch and Cole Custer. A few other drivers rounding out in the field here. Bubba Wallace will start 13th. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. is 15th. He's pretty strong at Kansas, has a couple wins. Uh, last year's champ, Chase Elliott, is 17th. Denny Hamlin is way back in 20th. Alex Bowman, the winner at Richmond a couple weeks ago, is it that's cutoff spot 25. We talked about that earlier. Uh, Brad Keselowski is the lowest winner, lowest starting winner at 25th in 2011 here. But here's a couple more names. Kurt Busch, of course, he's had a rough season, but he does run pretty good at Kansas. Uh, 28th starting spot and 29th starting spot for Joey Logano. So just some names, Kyle Larson starting 32nd. So you have some guys that run great at mile and a half tracks, starting way in the back. I don't look for those guys to win. I, I could see those guys 8th, 9th, 10th, right about in there. But as far as my favorites, dark horses and long shots, and of course this just goes along with me doing my, my DraftKings. I don't win a lot of money on DraftKings, I'll tell you that right now. But this is just my predictions. This is my what what I like to see just based on the lineup, previous history, etc., etc. So favorites, I've got Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Martin Truex Jr., and Denny Hamlin. Those four guys seem to be, you know, pretty strong this year. Uh, MTJ has two wins. Brad K, of course, won last week at Talladega. Harvick and Hamlin still looking for their first wins of the year. Hamlin's incredibly consistent right now. Harvick's. Mm, been consistent but not consistently at the front so you can't really count Harvick out at any track my dark horses I got Tyler Reddick I believe he's starting 11th let me double check that uh yes Har or Reddick is starting 11th so he's he's right outside that cusp that top 10 he could pull one off he's always strong Austin Dillon of course Austin starts inside the top 10 but Austin is kind of, he, he's not a favorite everywhere. He he's not, doesn't have a strong track per se. But I think Austin could squeak out a win here. Two of his three wins have come on mile and a half tracks. Uh, Eric Almarola is a dark horse. Uh, he does have seven top tens and 18 starts at Kansas. But that's about it. He, of course, he broke his back here a few years ago in a crash. But Eric's just... He's had a bad year, but I think he could have a good run this weekend. And Christopher Bell. Christopher doesn't have a lot of numbers at this track because he doesn't have a lot of races at this track. So I kind of put him in that category of, yeah, he's driving for Gibbs. Yeah, he's got a lot of wins in the Xfinity Series and in the Truck Series. He just has to uh, get a little bit more seat time in the Cup Series before I put him in that top echelon of drivers. So he's kind of that fourth driver at Joe Gibbs right now. But you give him a little more time, a little more uh, experience, he'll be right up there with the other three. Now, my long shots, got a couple big names in the long shots, and, and I'll explain those as we get to them. I got Ricky Stenhouse as a long shot. He's zero top tens and 16 starts there. Second to Michael McDowell in that category. I, I just think Stenhouse is wildly inconsistent this year. He had a good run going last year and got involved, or last week at Talladega, got involved in a couple little brush ups, uh, setting back a little bit. I think if Stenhouse can have a good solid day, I could see him easily be in a, a 12th to 14th place car. Uh, Daniel Suarez, I got him as a long shot. I think this team has shown flashes of brilliance. He does have one top 10 in eight starts at Kansas, but he just. The, the team's, I'm not going to say the team's underfunded because they, they do have sponsorship, they do have resources, I believe coming from Childress and, and Technical Alliance and that sort of thing. Just, just still building the team, so they could be a bit of a long shot here. 
Uh, Matt DiBenedetto, of course, he does start. I believe he was a top 10 starter. Yeah, he starts fifth, and he is in that uh, top 10, you know, opportunity to win based on starting in the top 10, but he has zero top 10s in 12 races at Kansas. So again, this track has been a bit of Achilles heel for him. We'll have to see what he can make of it. And you're probably going to blast me for this one, but Joey Logano, and here's why. You know, this is probably the biggest name this year that I've put in the long shot category in two reasons. One, we just talked about starting position. Very important to start inside that top 10, and he starts even further back than uh, 25th. So it starts in 29th position, but on top of this, he's only had nine, nine top 10s in 23 races at Kansas. So less than half the time, about 40% of the time, Joey finishes in the top 10. Yeah, he's got a couple wins there, but he's wildly inconsistent here. You know, he's crashed out a few times, may, may or may not have his own problem, his own doing, but that happens. But I think Joey is a long shot this week for those reasons. But he's definitely somebody I'm going to have on one of my DraftKings teams because he's going to get you a lot of passing points, maybe uh, fast lap points. And if he gets up front, obviously the leader points. But I think he'll get you those passing points and the uh, finishing position points. That looks like it's all my notes. So, of course, they did the metric qualifying. We talked about that. We talked about all the other stats. Got, got all of our little predictions in. So we uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, by the time this drops, you would have already seen today's card video as well. Not sure what we're going to do on the cards tomorrow or Hot Wheels or, or whatever we got planned. We'll, I try not to plan on this channel. I just like to look around here and say, hey, this is what we're doing today. But hope you guys enjoyed this video, this preview of the, and I got to get my paper out because I'll forget what the race is called. The Bushy Muck Bush Race 400. Yes, guys, that's real life. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and we will see you again tomorrow.